Hi there. This is Ryan Malloy here at the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. In this video, we're going to discuss how to make a four quadrant graph. Now, the term four quadrants refers to the fact that there are four different general areas of the graph that we're concerned about. Where both x and y are positive, where x is positive and y is negative, where y is positive but x is negative, and both x and y are negative. Now, you may be only used to seeing a single quadrant graph, meaning both x and y are positive, which often comes up when we're modeling some natural phenomenon. So there are a number of times in nature when values simply won't be negative for any reason. But in pure mathematics, we need to be comfortable graphing when things are negative. So let's go ahead and take a look at some arbitrary linear function. We'll say y equals 3x minus 2. And we'll go ahead and give us ourselves some tick marks. OK. So recall that any time the input value is positive, will be on the right side of our graph. And any time the input value is negative, will be on the left side. And similarly, any time the output value is positive, will be on the top half. And any time the output value, or y value, is negative, will be on the bottom half. And if you keep that in mind, it's fairly simple. You can make it even easier if you go ahead and label all of your tick marks based on whether they're positive or negative, just so you don't get confused later on. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. All right, so just start plugging in some input values for x and seeing what you get for y. See here, if x is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, we get negative 2. So I'll mark that down, negative 2. OK, what about if x is negative 1? Well, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. So go to input value of negative 1, which is on the left half of our graph, and count down to negative 5, which will be somewhere down here. All right, what about if we give input value of 1? So x is 1, we get 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2 is 1. So go over to 1, up 1. And from here, three points is more than enough for drawing a line. So we'll go ahead and connect those. And voila. From this definition, we've been able to make a graph in all four quadrants. Though, it does not actually hit this quadrant. But you could easily come up with a function that hits all four. You have a uh, parabola, for example. Something like this. Or you could have a cubic function. Comes from negative infinity, shoots through all of the quadrants. But no matter how exotic your function is, graphing it is as simple as this was. Just plug in the input values, go to the proper tick mark, go up or down accordingly. Drop down a point, once you've got some points, connect the dots. And it's just that simple. My name is Ryan Malloy. We've just discussed how to make a four-quadrant graph.